Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So this week we are finally doing a review of a home personal launch monitor. We've been trying to do this one for a few weeks and had some technical difficulties. We have, so initially we tried to put both units literally side by side, yep. hit the exact same ball. The only issue is I believe the quad puts out some kind of infrared signal that was interrupting Skytrax. So when we did that, we occasionally got a shot, although they usually missed it. The numbers seemed okay, but we're gonna separate them and do them one one to one and compare the numbers just because it's not feasible to do at the same time. Exactly, yeah. I mean, and, and the ball positioned sort of, and ultimately for both of them is, is not ideal either. It's not the same spot. So yeah. we were, to be honest with you, we were probably doing both machines a disservice that way. We are. Um, so the reason it took us a couple weeks is it took us a while to figure out that this is the way to test it. Yeah. Um, the closest way to find out how close the numbers are, because that's really what people want to know. Yeah. This is about two grand US, quads about 15. 15-ish. Yeah. Um, obviously a professional tool, but available to the public. This is a little bit more on the radar for, for a normal person's budget. Yeah. And I think people just want to know, I'm not a PGA Tour player, I'm not a fitting center, I'm mm. not a coach, I want to know my numbers, but I need something affordable. Is this going to be accurate enough that it doesn't detract from your practice? And That's play? it. That's it in a nutshell. Um, and as we go into a sort of another um, yeah. fairly quiet winter, yep. uh, COVID related, lots of people setting up practice areas at home, maybe Tons. resetting up a practice area they had going in the spring when, when we were all in lockdown. So True. more people are interested in, in home launch monitors um, than, than ever before. I mean, I know Foresight is on the more expensive end. Talking to the guys recently, you cannot, but you cannot get one for four months. I can imagine. Yeah, it's yeah. just you just cannot get a foresight unit for four months in this <laughs> territory. Um, the installs are booked out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I can only imagine the guys at Skytrack being a more cost-effective unit. Um, it are are even more slammed with it. Would be. There's lots of features we're going to talk about here. Um, you know, we've got the little iPad application going yep. here, which which looks great. It's nice. Uh, really, really good. I'm very impressed with it, to be honest. It's one it's, of the better ones I've seen. It's quite good. Um, yeah. So once once we get rolling with that, we're going to chat to some of the features and functions a little bit. Okay, so it does come out with a slight delayed reaction mm -hmm. uh, on Skytrack, but fair. it's okay. Carried 107, you're hitting sand wedge, spun at 10,878. That sounds right. Very much what we expect yep. to see. I imagine that'll be fairly similar, maybe launch a bit higher. Yep, that uh, came out to 104 Okay. On, on that one, 30. So open phase, more spin. Tiniest of tiny little draws there. No, actually, if it stays out of hell's line. Um, you, you basically are seeing exactly what you see uh, on, on quad from a distance perspective. Yeah. When any time, you guys have seen it, guys, when we do the ball test, Matt hits the sand wedge, we set the green to 105. 107, 104, 106 Every have time. been your first uh, three. So Very from that perspective, if, if we are going to judge it based on accuracy and distance, it passes that first test, no yeah. question. I would have no issue with those numbers. I wouldn't be suspicious of them. Yeah. Just Guys, one thing we, we will have to touch on is obviously the, the amount of data that you get from it. It is all ball data. There's no club data in here. Uh, we, we are not able to get a sense of, uh, you know, path, angle of attack, face angle, dynamic angle, any, any of those things. We know what the result was. We don't know how it got okay. to that result. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, I mean, fair enough, right? For, for 10 grand difference. What are you going to get? I mean, yeah, you, you're literally talking 2,000 to 15,000 you just, yeah, you're not going to Take get a all that in there. Yeah. And I think for most people, better to get ball data that's pretty accurate than them try to figure out, who knows, maybe it's in the pipeline, but you're absolutely right. I think for a consumer level tool, the, the ball data is what you need. You know, quad is, is what it is because there's, you know, four cameras, nine lenses in each camera, yeah. hunt over 100 pictures over 18 inches. We're seeing entry, we're seeing impact, we're seeing separation. 
you know, and that's that's what you're paying for, right? And and that's and it's absolutely worth it to At the that right top person. Industry leading yep. level, that is exactly what you're 100%. paying for. One hundred percent. Whereas you know here, this is this is this is a great budget solution. Definitely. So far, so good. Um, I'll hit some seven Yeah. How'd you hit that one? A little bit fat. Yes, yeah, went forever. Okay, so probably our first misread on that one. Uh, 203 carry mm, there. That's a no. Yeah. So 17 launch, 43.99. It's a much better strike. Much, much better. How did that? So that one, that one's going, going a fair ways to the right. Is it? 204 on the carry, uh, 18 launch, 5,000. That's definitely a seven. <laughs> yeah, it's a seven. Yeah. That did not um, feel like that. Okay. We're going to do a, a quad session uh, yeah. after this as well. We're going to verify these numbers against quad, do the exact same test and sandwich seven iron some drivers uh, and see how accurate. For sure. Yeah. See it. Yeah, I would have thought that was about a 185 shot that I just hit. That shouldn't fly more than 180, probably a little bit left. It's a little toey. It's hooking a lot. It's just not doing that. Yeah, 210. No, that's uh, so far off. So spin is, spin is very low. So you've, you've manufactured a right to left shot. Should there. be, or at least straight. It shouldn't, it's not moving right. It's got a tiny amount of fade to it. Okay, so that's a little better. A little bit better. It's not going to. I'm not sure why it thinks it's carrying 201. There's just no way. I will guess pretty straight, 290 in the air, 2200 spin. Looked like a Matt Bloys drive. It felt like one. <laughs> I would know. 300 on the fly. Maybe. 175 ball speed. No, definitely not. 14 launch, 29 spin. No. There's quite a few no's there for me, to be so, honest. So, so distance we're happy with, 300, 324. Yeah. Carry is fine, totally yeah, fine. But we just, we think it was a bit slower and probably less spin. It's very similar to the last one. Yep, it drawn slightly. Looks a bit flatter this time. Okay. 285 in the carry. Uh, that was Spinning. 169. And okay. 2,800 in the spin. So I, I, that ball speed seems more accurate because yeah. okay. these are legitimately the first two driver swings of the day. Mm -hmm. That's good too. Yeah, slightly more draw to that one, Matty. Okay. Okay with that. I don't, I don't have any reason to, to sort of doubt that. It didn't seem like anything else that was going on. 176, 3,000. So we think yeah. both of those things are inflated. They do seem high. Try to hit like a very... I'll hit a fade and try to hit it a bit harder, maybe. Mm -hmm. That should definitely fade. And it should be faster in speed, too. Perfect fade. Like that one? Love that one. It's in the air for days. 317. Not 184. <laughs> okay, Matty boy, we've got our quad back uh, up and running here. Um, we're just literally going through this same set. Same shots. Sand wedge, seven iron, we're going to hit some drivers. We have some averages. We yep. have our table here on Skytrack. We're going to do a little comparison uh, and then we'll, we'll see how closely we feel the are. That's the thing. I mean, obviously I'm not going to hit the ball identical. I just want to see are they yeah. reasonably close or are there discrepancies, which I think we can easily tell from this test. I mean, you're not going to be identical, but week to week, you're darn close. So For sure. It's within, I don't know, it's ten usually within apart. a couple percent. Yeah, yeah. You'll, be, you'll be good. Yeah. Yeah, these feel like the swings I made before and I'm looking at the numbers even on the screen. They're very close. I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt the wedge numbers we received at all. So I think this is, this is something for me that's quite interesting because we've just hit some wedges. Um, something 
I think radar based launch monitors have always had a little bit more of a difficult job with is, is being uh, on wedges. That's a great point, especially so, indoors, right? Here's a budget unit that's, that could be good for some, some wedge work over the winter. If that's your, your weakness, that's, if that's your flaw. I'm pretty impressed with how good it did launch angle and spin rate. And really good. There. Like that was quite legit. Very tight. Yeah. Out the gate with a beauty. That's pretty good. Okay, standard stuff. Yeah, those are th those are three very three good, very but very ones. yeah, very standard seven iron for me. I mean, try and draw up better. I don't think you will be able to. Um, one thirty ball speed plays one thirty one uh, with Skytrack. So okay. even if we took we'd one that we were kind of hitting that little bit of a cut with, I'm going to just take that one out. Um, so 133 was really the number with Skytrack. Okay. 18.8 um, on the launch Skytrack was 18.2. Don't have a great problem with that. No. Nope. Our spin, uh, our spin readings are the, are the issue. 5,759.95. Call it 6,000 and 6,000. So we we got on the carry distance 203, 204, and 210, mm. 201 with Skytrack, hmm. based on spin rates being significantly lower. So it, it misread spin rate on this mid iron. Really fundamentally, the two issues we have with seven iron are it carried too far. Yes. And it spun far too low. Far too little. Like 1600 too low. 25% too low. Yeah. yeah. Spun in four iron territory. That is exactly the same as like the first or second Skytrack drive. Okay. Probably like my first swing of the day felt exactly like that. A little higher in the strike maybe there? Just slightly. That's Definitely perfect. Spin, uh, spin came down. That's perfect one to keep in. Yeah. Very nice. Very playable. Tasteless. Serviceable. Yeah. It's kind of like the last one I hit. Cutting a bit, spins up. Faster ball speed, that's a 172, I think. As we acknowledge, wedge was great, seven iron, little discrepancy on, on speed and spin. Mm -hmm. um, exact same issue with the driver. So average ball speed, 176. Today you are 174, sorry, 177.4, 77.8, 67.8, 172. Average in 169 ball speed from yeah. your tight list it's exactly what you it felt like. You were hitting it really nicely. Yeah. First, first driver swings of the day, that's exactly where I am, yeah. always. Um, spin rate was, it, it kind of kicked up a little in the first one, then you were a little bit more like where we normally see you. The next two, we averaged just a shade under 2,900 on the Skytrack, 13 launch. Again, okay. the launch angle doesn't seem to be an issue. No. It seems to do a nice job with that. Agree. The spin rates are, are too high with the driver. We would think, we'd, yeah. we'd probably guess they're a little bit high. Seems like it. And the ball speed is definitely too high. You know, and 184 so, is you no. souped up to the, to the maximum and, and really going after Only it. Only hit it two or three drives of times ever. In your life. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that swing, I promise yeah. you. Yeah. Too much speed and too much spin is, is what we're seeing with the driver. Kind of the opposite of, uh, of the iron with, from a spin perspective where we saw it was too low. So you had a really good idea. You thought <clears> maybe <throat> the amount of club head speed and ball speed we're producing for these longer shots could be an issue, yeah. and maybe a slower player might see none of this. So we're literally just going to hit a few shots again, let's say 60%, 70% speed, dial it back a bit, and see if we yeah. get the accuracy out of it. We're just worried if, if the ball is coming out the viewing window a little quickly Quick. and it doesn't, you know, <clears throat> over 100 images over 18 inches yes. is the competitive advantage a foresight has. Right, which is why it picks them up all it's the time. It's what it has, in it, and it's, it's, it's sort of... You know, taking those those four cameras and, and circulating the viewing mm. angles, create creating that imaging from looking forward, looking back, looking from above, looking from below, and every one of those cameras and lenses talking to one another to verify what it sees. Makes sense. That that's that's why we're able to rely on such great data on on GC Quad. So I'm going to hit a couple of what feel like we're going to verify it, but 150 yard seven irons roughly. Yeah. 
and we'll check the, the numbers. Okay, yeah, got it. Nice. Yeah, little, little tiny little draw there. It's it's doing much, much, much better. That's very speed. interesting. One more? Yeah. Yeah, just turned it over a little bit. Mm -hmm. 53, 83 spin, perfect. Great. Let's let's verify that. Yeah. It's a good sign. Beautiful. Really nice. That's the idea on really good contact on that one. Yeah, that felt like the last one I hit. 1955. Really good ball speed 111. So so the previous one we hit there carried 156. That carried 157. You've hit that straight, the last one curved a little bit. The, the launch angle was at, call it 19. Launch angle was a little higher in Skytrack, 21. Spin within 130. Ball speed within one. Interesting. Does a lot better at, at more of a recreational speed, if you want to call it that. The high-end speeds, I don't know if I would be, if I'd be throwing kind of, you know, too much weight behind uh, the Skytrack unit if you have a, your type of speed. Yeah. Which... Most people don't fall into that category anyway. I think that's fair. Yeah. So it was really good that you even brought that up. Mm. Glad we found that. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right. For most people, you're probably not going to even care. Yeah. Because it's doing really well at, at an average club head speed or even just slightly above average, I would yeah. say maybe for the yeah. seven arm. Um, and if you are in elite speed range, then maybe you just have to look into a different machine. Definitely. Uh, I, I think all in all, it, it's it's a good little unit. I mean, it is, it's yeah. it's going to uh, it's going to tide you over the the winter period. You know, personal use, yes. Business and, and professional use, no. No, I think yeah. that's fair to say. I it mean, is. Well, if you look at sort of the personal, uh, so they have a, an, an optimizer um, sort of range. Oh yeah, right. And you can get into that, and you can look at things like you know where your launch and spin should be. Mm. Uh, where's an optimal angle of descent, all those sorts of things. Because if you're using it for personal use, you might not know those numbers uh, the way we do. So that's, that's, nice. that's a great guideline um, for, for helping you sort of uh, verify what your numbers are. I would say conclusively, that's two grand really well spent. Yeah. Unless you are super fast. And you're you're fast. If you're worried about the spin rates at a super fast club at speed, yeah. fine. Yeah. If you aren't, yeah. I don't think you can do better in this price range mm -hmm. for a uh, personal launch monitor. I really yeah. don't think we've you can do not better. seen. I mean, we, we'll, we'll probably get a few other ones to test over the next few months, over the winter months. I'll be interested to see if anything stacks up to this. I, like I think I said to you, my concern is that people may misdiagnose that either their equipment or their yes. delivery is not working. As you said, I think they have an algorithm that did a decent guess at that mm -hmm. speed, but it doesn't have the. 2,000 different views that Quad has to verify it and make sure it's correct. So yeah. again, in that space, you get what you pay for. This mm -hmm. is more professional tour for the higher speeds in any speed. Yeah. This one's great for, I think, the vast majority of people, yeah. which is what it's intended to be anyway. Definitely. Great integrations with E6 uh, as well, which Absolutely. is a fantastic secondary uh, software that you can use for gaming. And obviously that's something we'll be using a little bit with, with yeah. uh, Quad over the winter time. It'll be our, our uh, winter time on course mm -hmm. lots. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think I think all in all it's it, it's a it's a pretty useful okay. system for home use. Yeah, I would I would recommend yeah, that to someone definitely. for sure. Yep. Okay guys, um hopefully this is this is good time and hopefully this is coming at a really good time for you coming into the winter season for many of us and if you do want to keep a club in your hands and keep kind of swinging and working away at your game and you may get some clubs over the winter time and want to just uh, verify how they're performing, I think Skytrack's a great option for that. I think a, a secondary option of going to a, a quad, a foresight or trackman dealer may be needed in order to verify your delivery, why the result is happening the way that it's happened. I think that'd be a great idea for you. But in terms of just verifying your carry numbers and things like that, I think this is great. I totally agree. Excellent. Okay, stay tuned for more. We'll see you again soon. Thank you.